Hey, I'm William. Today we're going to show you how to test and replace the main control on your Samsung top load washer. If you're experiencing problems such as the washer not starting, cycles not completing, or unusual error codes appearing, it might be time to inspect this part. Now before we get started, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more useful appliance repair guides. Let's dive in and get your washer back in tip top shape. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. For today's work, we'll need a multimeter, a Phillips screwdriver, and a pair of pliers. Also, please remember that safety comes first. Always disconnect your top load washer by either unplugging it or switching off the breaker. With the power safely off, we're ready to tackle the troubleshooting process. Let's jump right into diagnosing the issue with your washer. So let me show you how we are accessing it. We're grabbing our Phillips screwdriver and removing the five Phillips screws along the back of the console panel. With the screws removed, the back half of the console will pull away from the console assembly and we can set it to the front. The front console will lift up at the back and we can rotate it so that the face is down. We may have to lift the lid in order to do this. We are plugging the power cord in at this point. Extreme care should always be taken to protect against electrical shock, which could potentially result in serious injury. Please do not test live voltage if you are uncomfortable using a multimeter around live voltage. We are grabbing our multimeter and setting it to volts AC, which looks like a V with a squiggly line. If you'd like a refresher on how to use a multimeter, we've put together a comprehensive tutorial for you, so check out the link in the description. We are rotating the top panel, turning the console on, and starting a wash cycle. We are testing the valve solenoids for 120 volts AC. If the valve receives voltage, but no water comes through, then the valve has failed. If there is no voltage, we will need to continue troubleshooting. We are canceling the wash cycle. Once it is fully stopped, we are pressing temperature, spin, rinse, and then spin again, then rotating the selector knob until 007 shows on the display to do a frequency test. This shows what the pressure sensor is sensing, and we are looking for a reading between 25 to 26 kilohertz. We are going to turn the washer off and unplug the power cord. We are setting our meter to resistance, which looks like an upside down horseshoe. We are disconnecting the wire connection from the pressure sensor and testing the pressure sensor from pin 1 to pin 3. We should see resistance between 15 to 35 ohms. If the pressure sensor did not have a good frequency reading or it failed a resistance test, the pressure sensor would need to be replaced. If the water valve did not receive voltage and the pressure sensor tested good, the failure would be in the main control. Reaching this section of the troubleshooting verifies the failure by the process of elimination. If you found your main control has failed, I'm going to show you how to replace it. Thankfully, this one is easy. We're also going to go ahead and remove the three main control mounting screws with our Phillips screwdriver. Grabbing our flathead screwdriver, we are going to separate the main control cover from the main control assembly. We're going to disconnect the wires from the main control. You may want to take a picture before disconnecting the wires so that you have a reference of where they plug in when installing the new main control. Here's the old main control and here's the new one. If you've already got one, great. If not, you can pick one up at appliancepartspros.com. We are connecting the wires onto the main control, referencing the picture taken as needed. We are grabbing the main control cover and securing it to the back of the main control assembly, then securing that in place with the screws that we removed earlier. We are grabbing the console and rotating it into the top panel, lifting the lid a little bit just to slide it in. Now we are securing the back console panel back to the console with the screws that we removed earlier and then plugging the power cord back in. With that, we are done. Great job tackling that repair and getting your Samsung washer back in action. We'd love to hear how your fix went, so feel free to share your experience in the comments below. If you still need a new main control unit or any other part, just head over to appliancepartspros.com. Most orders arrive within just a couple of days. Thanks for choosing us for your appliance repair needs, and we look forward to helping you with your next project.